In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this shape right here in just a couple of minutes using very, very basic operations inside a blender. Let's go. If you're brand new to hard surface modeling and want to learn our entire workflow in under two weeks, like nearly 5,000 students have done at this point, then check out our accelerator program in the link below. So we're going to start by taking this default cube here. We're going to scale it on the X to about this point. And then I'm also going to scale this on the Z to about this point. Now, whenever I scale something, generally, this is not a hard rule, but generally I want to apply the scale because usually in my workflow, I'm going to end up adding a bevel and the bevel is going to be a bit skewed. But if I press control A and apply the scale in object mode, it's going to be an even bevel again not a hard rule but you know I, i've been doing this so long i kind of know ahead of time when to apply the scale and, and you'll get there as well so i'm going to press Control r to add in a loop cut i'm going to position it to about here so we're not like completely symmetrical a bit offset then i'm going to press Control b to add in a bevel like that just one segment you can scroll down and that'll basically allow me to go into face mode. And by the way, I'm using machine tools to quickly get in and out of edit mode. It's uh, probably the best add-on you can get. And then I'm just gonna take this face and move it up a little bit. And I'm also going to take this edge here and kind of slide that over a little bit as well. I think that'll be good. And then I'm just gonna select everything, X and then limited dissolve. We can get rid of the junk on the side there. And then I'm just going to go into edge mode. I'm going to take these two edges right here. I'm going to bevel it with a couple of segments. Just scroll up. And then over here, I'm going to take this area, control B, and I'm going to bevel until it starts overlapping. When it starts overlapping, you can press the C key to clamp it. Click. The only issue is you're going to have a redundant edge right here because they meet at the center, right? So you can select everything. M and then merge by distance to get rid of that, uh, those two overlapping edges there. So that's going to be kind of the first step to create the shape I want. And then I'm just going to right click to shade auto smooth. Now, whenever I'm going through my design process, I like to actually go in here and just make sure I have all the bevels kind of set. You can kind of see we have bevels here, but we have these hard edges right here. I'm going to go ahead and bevel that just kind of arbitrarily. And then this one, I'm going to bevel to about that point, maybe right to about there. It looks good. And then I'm going to do something a little bit tricky, but it's going to give us a really cool and interesting shape. I'm going to add in a cylinder, shift A, mesh, and then cylinder. I'm going to give this, whoops, I'm going to give this 64 vertices. And if you're new to the channel, the reason I say 64 is because the default is 32. I just like to double it. It gives it like a more rounded effect. I'm gonna right click to shade auto smooth. And there we go. And then I'm just gonna go into the front view here. I'll press three or one on the number pad, depending on your orientation. Then I'm just gonna rotate this RY90 and just kind of move this uh, cylinder over to here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go into vertex mode and then Z to go into wireframe. I'm gonna box select all these vertices right here and then just X to delete those vertices. And now I'm just gonna have, I guess, a semi-cylinder, you could call it. And then I'm just gonna go into side view here, and in wireframe, I'm gonna scale this and just hold control. And I'm just going to position this right here, kind of on the edge. We're gonna be merging these vertices, so we don't have to be perfect, don't worry about that. And then I'm just gonna move this over to here, roughly. And then I'm gonna take, uh, or actually I'm just gonna scale it on the X, just kind of position it right to about here. Again, we don't have to be perfect because we will be merging this together. So don't worry about that. Now, the next thing I wanna do here is I want to join this to this object. I'm not going to run a union because I'm just gonna join everything together and you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm gonna take this shape, shift click this shape and then control J. That's going to join it together, but it's not going to be physically merged together. So to do that, what I can actually do here is I can press Control R to add in a vertex on this edge right here. So Control R. And then if I just go into vertex mode, I'm going to take this vertex and I'm basically going to double tap G 
slide it to about there. If you want to be very accurate, you can actually go up here to vertex snap and then G X and then hold control to snap it. And then I'm just going to take this vertex right here, shift click on this one, M and then merge at the last vertex. All right. So now this is physically merged with this object here. Now I have to do the same thing to this side. So not really a big problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and control R. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take these edges and just kind of move this back a little bit. Then I'm going to take this vertex I just added in. Same idea, G, X, hold control to snap it to those vertices so it's perfectly aligned. And then I can just go into wireframe, select this one, shift click on this one, M, and then merge at last. And we're going to get this uh, area physically merged together. And then for the bottom portion, you might be tempted to run a symmetry or a mirror, but this isn't a symmetrical object. If I run a mirror, it's going to do that. So since this isn't symmetrical, we unfortunately need to do this again manually. So same exact idea. I can just go in here and I'm doing this slow on purpose. You can kind of follow me, but I'll just speed up this part. I'm going to snap that one, merge that one to there and same idea. Control R I'm going to snap that one and then merge. You can also press the period key on the numpad to zoom in and I'm going to take this one and merge it right to there. So M merge at last. If you're using machine tools, you can just press the one key as well. Now for a bit of context, you might be wondering why am I merging this one here and why am I not merging this one to this one? I'll show you uh, why that is. If I take this vertex and I merge it to that one, it's going to move this edge right here. It's going to bend that edge and it's going to cause a shading distortion. So what I'd much rather do is just move the part on the cylinder and merge that one there. So we're maintaining the flatness of this face. Hopefully that makes sense. And just to kind of show you, uh, it's probably not too obvious, but I, I do want you to kind of understand what's what it's going to look like if I merge this. It's slightly bent and that's going to cause a shading distortion. I don't know if you can see it. It's not super obvious, but there's going to be a little bit of a shading warp right there. So it's not really a big deal, but I'm just trying to keep things consistent. So I'm going to merge those two together. And now we're going to have this shape right here. Now what I want to do is I want to take this vertex up here and then take this one and I'm not going to press the F key. I'm going to press the J key. A lot of beginners mix this up. So if you press the F key, it's just going to add in an edge. It's going to fill the edge. The issue with that is it's not going to physically be connected to the face. This is still a singular face right here. The edge is just kind of hovering over it. If I press the J key, it will physically slice that face in half. So now I have a face here and then I have a face here. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two vertices, press the J key. And now I can just go to this face here, delete that face, and I can hold alt and select these edges and fill that. The reason we don't want the face in here is because it's going to be non-manifold and that would cause issues if we have an interior face. If I were to go to an add-on like the 3D print toolbox, it's going to actually find non-manifold geometry. So make sure we just delete that out first, fill that, and then you're obviously not going to have any issues with a manifold geometry. So now what I want to do is I want to add a bevel right here, but I don't have a lot of space to do that. So what I'm going to do here is just dissolve out these two with control X and then dissolve out these two with control X. That should give me some more space. If you still don't have enough, you can do one more here. You could even do one right there and dissolve that one as well. And then I can go in here to these two edges, control B and just kind of add in a bevel just like that. So now we kind of have this shape. Now, the only downside if I do that is it's going to disrupt the curvature of the cylinder, which means you're going to have a pretty visible breakage right here because it's not a perfect cylinder anymore. If that bothers you, you can do something else here. Um, you could probably just go in, take these vertices here and just kind of move those out, give yourself a bit more buffer. And then I could probably go in here and add in the bevel that way. It just kind of depends, you know, what type of compromise you want to take. You can see here the shading is a lot better because we're not disrupting that uh, that curvature as much. So kind of up to you how you want to do that. What I think I'll do is I'll bevel 
right to this point. Just make sure clamp overlap is turned on with the C key. Select everything, M, and then merge by distance to get rid of those overlapping areas. And now we're gonna have this shape. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hop into top view and add in another cylinder here. So shift A, cylinder. We're gonna scale that down. We're gonna move that over to here. Now what I might also do is I might go into vertex mode and just box select this area, pull this out a bit more, and then I'll take this cylinder and move this over to here. And then just run a simple difference boolean. Now you can either use hard ops for booleans or you can use the bool tool add-on for booleans. The reason I don't do booleans manually is because you have to go in here, then you have to choose the boolean, then you have to hide it. It's just multiple steps. It's a waste of time. So obviously I just use hard ops to quickly run a difference boolean. So we're going to do that and we're just going to position it, I guess right there is fine. And then I'm going to duplicate the cylinder, move it over to here. I'm going to scale this one up and then just run a difference boolean on this area over here as well. So now we're going to have this type of shape. Now, I don't like adding in the micro details until my larger details have been added on the model. And the reason for that is I can focus on the big things first and then go to the secondary and then the tertiary details. So I'm gonna go in here and I could either apply, yeah, I'll just go ahead and apply it. I think I'm done with that. So I'll apply that Boolean, Control R to add in a loop cut right here. And then we'll just bevel that. E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S to kinda scale that in, kinda scale that down. And then we'll go in here and bevel that. That looks pretty cool. And then we're gonna go over to this one and I'm just gonna do a similar thing. I'll just go ahead and apply that Boolean. Same exact idea. We'll go in here and do the same type of thing. Um, not too sure why that loop didn't go all the way through. Looks like this because we have an end gone down here. So what I'm gonna actually do here is I'm going to fix these connection points. I'm just going to add in a loop there and then join that and then add in a loop here and then just join that as well. And then I can dissolve out with control X these uh, you know, bad connection points. So I could even go down here and join that. Just give it a nice perpendicular connection point and then dissolve that one out as well. And I could do the same thing on this side, dissolve that and there we go, now we have much cleaner connection points. Cool, so I can go ahead and add in the loop now, Control B, and then just add in an extrusion, so E, Alt S, and then just kind of scale that to about that point. We'll just run a bevel, just like we did before, and now we're gonna have this type of shape right here, which I think looks pretty interesting. And I'm also gonna go into edge mode and on this upper portion, I can alt shift click these two edges or set of edges and then just add a small chamfer right here as well, just to kind of make that look more interesting. So I like that. I'm also gonna go in here and I'm gonna to go to select sharp edges, but I don't wanna select these um, interior edges right here. These ones I don't want to bevel. So, you know, this isn't super complex, so I could, you know, deselect that manually. I could also use Mesh Machine to quickly select that, but in Vanilla Blender, that's not so easy. So guys, you have to pick your battles. Do you want to do it the slow and efficient way and control click, or do you want to use the right tools for the job? That's kind of what I go for. So I'm going to go into Mesh Machine and just alt click on the same edge, and that'll select the correct loops here. If you do that in Vanilla Blender with just an alt click, it doesn't know what to select because of the, um, the end gons here, right? So select one edge, alt click the other, and Mesh Machine will select that automatically. And then I can just go in and add in a, uh, a chamfer, just like that, to kind of create that type of shape. Now what I want to do is I want to hop into top view, I want to add in a plane, rotate this by 90 degrees, and then just kind of move this over to here, scale this up, and then I'm going to add a solidify modifier. Now with the solidify, you want to make sure the offset is set to zero, Otherwise, it's going to offset in one direction. I think it's the dumbest setting in the world. It should be zero by default, but um, now it's going to offset evenly. And then I can go ahead and run a difference Boolean right here on this side of the object. Just maybe move that in a little bit so it's kind of offset. I think it looks better. 
and there we go. And then I'm just going to duplicate this one. You can press Control Z to undo that, just to access it. Shift D to duplicate, right click, and then rotate this on the Z by 90 degrees. And then we'll move this over to here and then run a difference Boolean on that side as well to kind of create that shape. Now, as always, I like to go in, I like to add in a bevel just to kind of, you know, have that nice edge highlight. So we're going to do that. And that is uh, looking pretty good, actually. So at this point, this is where you can get fancy. You can add in additional details. So for example, I could come in here and maybe add in a cube. I could scale that down and kind of position it here and run a difference Boolean here on the bottom. That could be like a interesting, you know, visual detail there just to kind of enhance it a bit. And you can kind of, you know, keep iterating on this as much as you want and kind of apply these concepts to make any type of design that you want. So that's it, a very, very simple model. You can make that in, you know, a couple of minutes very, very easily. Uh, there are some shading artifacts here from the bevel, obviously. So um, the reason that's occurring is because there's some slight overlaps. If that bothers you, you could always go into here and just, um, there's like a redundant edge right there. I can just dissolve that out. Same for over here, just a small redundant edge, dissolve that out. And there you go, perfect shading. So that's it, very simple shape, very easy to make, and you can apply these tools to pretty much any model that you wanna make. Now, if you wanna learn our full hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks of time and also get direct access to us, we've completely revamped this offer. It has almost 5,000 students now, and we're gonna get you very, very proficient at hard surface modeling in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes per day. That is a guarantee. So if you wanna get results like you see on the screen right now, check out our accelerator program in the link in the top of the description. This is the best program on the market if you want to learn hard surface modeling. This is not my opinion. This is based on thousands and thousands of student results. We'll get you very, very good very quickly. So check out that program in the link in the description. Thanks a bunch for watching. See you in the next video.